Hello and welcome to Toastmasters in the Community. My name is Fran Okeson and I'm the producer and director of the program. We're in the almost toward the end of our 13th year. It's been a very quick 13 years, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it amazing. is. It's amazing. I want to thank everybody for coming. We did have snow on January 6th and didn't tape then. So today is sort of a merger of the January proposed agenda and the February agenda. So we're going to move right ahead. We had to make a few changes today. And since we haven't been here since December, we're a little bit out of practice with making changes. So let's just start the program. With me today is Lucy Kahn, who is an officer in our club. She's our club secretary. And we'll hear more about Lucy in a little while because it's my pleasure and my honor to present her with a special award today. So moving right along, our first speaker is, and I can't see a thing beyond this lighted part here, so if I call somebody and they're not there, just be kind and just say, Fran, no, 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 it's something else. All right, so our first speaker today is Sue Brooks, who we just took away from the, Sue does the audio in the room, so I guess somebody else is doing audio or we'll all not be heard today. Sue has a very interesting speech, and Lucy, I put you down as her evaluator because I yes. thought you'd like to do this. <laughs> and it's speech number four in the basic manual, how to say it. And her title, you have six minutes. Joan, watch the timing. People have six minutes on these speeches. And the title is The Best Birthday Gift Ever. Let's all welcome Sue Brooks. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster fellow Toastmasters in the audience and viewers at home. It all started several months ago. My dad sent an email to my sister, my brothers, and I. Can you all come down to Florida to celebrate mom's 85th birthday? Immediately I thought, well, uh, let me check. One of my, my sister and one of my brothers immediately responded, yes, we're in. My other brother had to wait for coverage for the hospital where he works. My manager had just gone on a two-week vacation, but I knew I really wanted to go to Florida to help celebrate my mom's 85th birthday with my siblings and my dad. As soon as my manager came back, I requested permission, and it was granted. I had already made the airline reservations in the hotel room, being proactive and wanting to make sure I was there. Whenever we speak to my dad and my mom on the phone, it's always a little bit of a chancy situation because they're always together. The voice is always on speakerphone. My mom is always over his shoulder. So we have to be guarded with what we say and when we say it. My sister, brothers, and I made the reservations and coordinated back and forth on a group text chat. What airline are you coming in on? What time is your flight? Let's all meet up and get a rental car and we can surprise mom all together, all at the same time. It worked out great. One of us flew in from Newark, New Jersey, the other from New Hampshire, and the other two came in from Westchester County Airport and LaGuardia Airport. We synchronized up at the Florida airport in Fort Lauderdale, one coming in on United, one coming in on Delta, two coming in on JetBlue. Hi, where are you? Are you in? Did you land? It all worked out great. We went over to the rental car place, and my brother said, hey, let's get a van. I see one in the lot. We thought that would be great. This way, if all of us go out all at the same time, no, we don't have to bring two cars. We got the van with no trouble. We went down to my parents' apartment, and before we entered, my dad said to, the, to my mom, Trudy, go get the door. They were eating lunch. My dad was up. She said, no, you get the door. You're up. <laughs> my dad wasn't having any, any luck getting her to be surprised. So he opened the door. Her jaw dropped. You're all here. Wow. Uh, uh, wait, are the grandchildren here too? <laughs> My dad had orchestrated it so it would be just the four siblings. At the beginning of December, when it was my mom's birthday, 
the grandchildren were still in school or at work. So that wasn't going to happen. She was looking around, are the spouses here? No, it was just going to be the six of us. She was shocked and surprised. Huh, well, what am I going to make for dinner? My dad had said to her a few days before, Trudy, make a lasagna. She said, well, our friends aren't coming over. Edith just had oral surgery. No, I'm not going to make the lasagna. My dad said, well, go ahead, make it anyway. She says, no, I'm not going to bother. It's okay. It all worked out. We didn't starve. And it was a wonderful experience after my mom got over the shock. We spent some quality t time together that afternoon and plotted out how we were going to have a great time during the total of the five days that we were there. Since we all enjoy watching birds and checking out nature, we decided to have an excursion out to one of the nature preserves. They had visited it previously and thought it would be a great experience for the whole family. On one of the days, we all traveled out to the nature preserve taking lots of photos and taking a nice slow walk. We came up with a great picnic lunch and had a wonderful time. During the evening, we had a group photo shot and my brother, in a sneaky manner, sent the digital photo to Walgreens, requested a print, and went out to the store, got the print, put it in a frame, and then for my mom's birthday, presented it to her. There's nothing better than a photo of the group of the family to capture the wonderful time that we had. So after our birthday dinner, we presented her with the photo. What a wonderful gift. After the trip was over and we all went back to New York, New Jersey, and New Hampshire, my dad sent every single one of us a small flash drive with photos from the trip. That, as my mom said, was the best birthday gift ever. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Sue. Boy, did you throw me for a loop. I put Lucy down because I thought you were going to talk about your birthday gift. <laughs> Remember I said that you ought to like that, see what they yeah. gave you for her birthday. <laughs> All right. Hello, Rachel. Thank you for filling in. Uh, You're welcome, Fran. When you hear your name, just come running. I'm sorry. Okay. Filling in for a missing speaker is Rachel Weiss. And Rachel, one of these people that you can always call on, and out of the top of her head, she just came up with something. So you are doing speech number six in the basic manual vocal variety. So we're going to see a lot of vocal variety there. Okay, and your title, as Ken gave it to me, is Techniques for Memorization, and your evaluator is Ken Raftery. Isn't that convenient? So let's all welcome Rachel Weiss. Thank you, Fran. I know for me, and I'm sure for you, memorization is a hard thing to do. There are many different types of techniques for memorization. One is called repetition, where you keep saying the same thing over and over and over again. I like to have the ability to tie a lot of different things together using your ears, using your eyes, using your mind to be able to have many different anchor points to be able to remember something. One of the techniques that I use is taking the first letter of each word or key words and putting them on a piece of paper. That's called an acronym, where you're taking the first letter of each word. An acrostic is where each line or each sentence, you're using the first letter to remember that sentence. Both of those are good techniques for being able to memorize something. Memorization is something that we need to do, whether that be for school or for personal, whether that be for self-development, or just facts. And so another way of doing this to be able to connect all those things together is to take what you're trying to memorize and put it to song. And so I'm going to share something with you, which is a, a favorite verse from Scripture. First, I'll, I'll speak it out. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are honest, 
Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, that is a fairly long piece. There are 26 key words in that verse. I learned it through song. Song is another way of memorizing. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Thought is something that we need to control. Thought is something that we need to have dwelling in our minds. That's called meditation. So I like to meditate on the good things. On Valentine's Day, let's remember the good things about our significant other. Let's remember the good things about our families. Let's remember what they mean to us, the blessings that they are, and think on those things. Thought is something that we all have to exercise. Our minds are like a muscle. How can we memorize things? Well, we can do that through song. We can do that through an acrostic. We can do that through an acronym. We can do that through repetition. One final way of memorizing things that I like to bring to you is writing things out. How many of you did something in school and the punishment was to go to the blackboard and write, I must not, I must not, I must not. Well, let's think about the good things. I should, I should, I should. And in writing those things out, you're putting a positive thought in place of the negative. Let's look at things from a positive perspective. Repetition is good, but let's repeat the good things. That is my word of wisdom for you this coming year. Fran? Thank you very much, hey, uh, Wow, Rachel. that's good. See, it's always good when you can come up with a speech at the last minute yeah. like that, huh? Yeah. Oh, good. I knew you could do it, Rachel. I was so proud of you. <laughs> okay, our next speaker. Ken, please go on time for John. All right. I'm assuming you're there. Our next speaker is our, one of our timers, John Marizio. The other timer in the second show will be Lucy, because she can't do it from here. <laughs> so we're switching yeah. around today. Okay. Joan is a distinguished Toastmaster to the third level. Joan, you're doing speech number four from the basic manual, how to say it. You again have six minutes. Paul Scharf. Past District Governor is your evaluator, and your title is Odd Travel Secrets. Let's all welcome Joan Orizio. Thank you for making me feel so welcome. Huh. I brought my buddy, RD, Read His Digest, and in it is 68 Secrets to Stress-Free Travel. And wow, you get in that airport and you go through security, that's enough to really give you a headache and a half. So how can you de-stress? I never knew this. It's almost like there's a lending library at each of the airports. They say that the airports, for the most part, all get their books from the same place. What they will do is if you buy a book from the airport and decide to relax by reading something nice, what happens is if within, just checking my time here, six months, you have six whole months to return that book, get half the price for the book, and then you can buy yourself another book by the time you fly again within six months. The thing is you have to keep your receipt. So keep your receipt right in the book, use it as a bookmark, and then when you're done with it, get rid of it. You get half the price back, and they're making money too. So I thought that was an odd secret to know, because I never knew there was any such thing. And make sure you check with the cash, cash year before you check out the book. Say, are you in that program where I can give the book back and I'll get half my money back? And then, of course, I'll spend that on another book. Just find out that out before time and keep your receipt. Another thing they say that... A lot of people, when they're flying, they don't fly that often, so they're really afraid to get on a flight. They said if you tell the flight attendant that you're afraid, she can either have calm words for you, or you can even win, a, win her over by 
getting a glass of wine to relax. So I think that's a nice thing for them to do. And it's called a complimentary glass of wine to soothe you. So they're looking to make your, your flight to another country or wherever across the country, they're looking to make it more calm for you. Another thing, and a lot of you know this because I spoke to other people about it and they know it, so you must know it too if you've flown before, count the rows to the closest exit. And that's because if the cabin ever fills up with smoke, you'll be able to get around without having to use your sight. So you want to make sure you do that too because the best of minds do get disoriented in times like that. Another thing, and I didn't know this, is don't doze off during your takeoff or landing. They say what happens is sleeping limits your ability for your ears to pop. I guess it's true. When your body falls asleep, everything falls asleep. So what happens? You don't pop your ears like the average person. So they say that not only will you be in terrible pain, you'll also have a moderate hearing loss to a severe hearing loss. And I wonder if that's why so many people, even my age, not that old, they're deaf already. And it's because of something like that they didn't know. And then the very next secret they told about was giving the child, if they can't chew gum, give them a lollipop or a sucker, because that swallowing, that constant swallowing is what makes up for the popping of the ears. Didn't know that. I knew your ears popped and you could feel it. So there you go. There's a, another little secret to keep the kids from ruining their, their hearing. Another thing they say is you must be dehydrated. You can get easily dehydrated on a plane. So what you want to do when you're on that plane is make sure you drink enough. And they say eight ounces of water for every hour you're on the plane. Another thing they suggest is that you bring in an empty water bottle, a 16 ounce water bottle, I guess. And they say, they say their water is good enough on the plane where you shouldn't have to bring your own water on. I don't know if I trust that so much, but anyway, their contention is their water is safe. You can always fill up the water bottle on their plane or with their facilities. But like I say, I don't know. That's up to you. <laughs> the individual knows best. They say in case of turbulence, jiggle around in your seat and it'll make you feel better as the plane is moving also. And you know what? The other people won't even be able to tell because they'll be jiggling too, whether they want to or not. Just when you're moving around with the plane, you're settling into the same movement the plane is, so it's not a surprise to you, and it helps you. Another thing they say is to get up and walk around at least two or three hours, every two or three hours. And I would say if you already have a pre-existing heart condition, maybe do it once every hour or more. I mean, even when you sit down and you watch TV in your house, it's the worst thing you could do, even though you're not up in the air with all that pressure. What happens is you become a couch potato. You can start having trouble with your legs, but when you're in an airplane and that pressure comes, you have to be very careful because you really can hurt yourself. The other thing they say is do not cross your legs. There's a big argument about crossing your legs, and the thing about crossing your legs is... Don't do it on a plane, because even if you don't have a condition, that can bring one up. So you want to be careful about that. And the last one that I thought was very interesting, because my mom has a pair of these noise-canceling headphones, and they're expensive. There's headphones, and then there's noise-canceling headphones. And they say people have actually lost their appetite to eat, because the engine noise on the plane does that. And if you're on a big, big jetliner, you better believe you're going to have less of an appetite, unless you're on a diet, then you don't mind. But they say you lose your ability to taste and smell. So I thought that was interesting. By wearing the canceling headphones, the noise canceling headphones, you'll get your appetite back. Anyway, I hope this helped somebody. I don't fly, so this is of no use to me at all. But I hope I helped somebody else, because I do like to read about other things that interest other people, and I learn things myself by reading about it. Fellow Toastmasters. Thank you very much, Thank John. Thank you. Okay, and I'm the number fourth speaker today, and my name is Fran Okerson. I'm doing speech number, let's see, speech number four in the Special Occasions Advanced Manual. It's called Presenting an Award. My evaluator, I believe, will be Rachel, because I hope Rachel has my book. She's taking Diane's place today. And my title is, You've Earned This in more ways than one. Rachel, I hope you're going to be out here. All right, so let me move on. Lucy, I'm so proud of you because you let me know that you were completing your AC bronze so that you can work toward your 
third DTM. Am third I correct? DTM, correct. Your third DTM. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Everybody likes numbers after their name, and the three is a very pretty number. All right. So I. I thought, oh, that's nice. She's asking me to present her with an award. Well, that's nice. So I did say before that you're our club secretary, and I like having you as an officer. There are things that I can't do for this club because all of our big events are over in New Jersey. And by the way, girls, my time is four minutes for this speech. Girl and boy, whoever's back there. So it's always good that somebody from this club can go and vote for our club over in New Jersey. But this year at the conference, Paul Shaw, past district governor, will be carrying our vote because you're not sure if you're going to be up in one of those planes yeah, with Joan right. and you don't know where you're going, <laughs> to the Philippines or someplace else. <laughs> so to make our vote count, we'll let Paul take it. And that's always good. All right. I did do a little research about you, Lucy. And do you remember when you joined Toastmasters for the first time? 1997. Yeah, what month? In f I think it was in February. Uh, well, um, the books say May. May. <laughs> May. May. I checked with the Toastmasters <laughs> International <laughs> website. Yes, yeah. you joined Toastmasters in May of 1997, so we should have celebrated last year for your 20th anniversary, but that's all right. I really feel that you're one of the special people because you support this club and everything. When we used to go to the Yankees game on Staten Island, you and Richard came and you stayed for the game. You've, t you've done multiple things all through these years. You keep giving me gifts and <laughs> <laughs> I have I have a lighthouse that's about this high, this glass, that it looked so beautiful on the table. And I said, oh, we'll bring that and use that because my theme all these years was share the light. And I love <laughs> lighthouses. But when I picked it up, somebody put it in the cart and I took it home. And when I went to take it, I figured, I can't carry this all the time. The <laughs> thing must weigh 10 pounds, 20 pounds. But anyway, and all the flashlights, you gave me those little flashlights. <laughs> so I used them to get around at night. I don't like sitting in the living room late at night with the front windows open. Uh, you know, I just don't, I like a little privacy. So I, I watch the TV in the dark, and then when I want to get up, there's that little Lucy's flashlight <laughs> around. So you have a great sense of humor. And, uh, oh yes, the keychains. You gave me a couple of things at the last meeting in December. And one, I had no clue what it was. I said, oh, it's a keychain. And you're with this other organization that you're so proud of that I figured, oh, well, that's very nice. I have 20,000 keychains, even your flashlights are keychains, until one day I went to open it, and Peter was looking for a screwdriver to fix something, and he could not find a small screwdriver. And one day I was fiddling with the keychain you gave me, and I saw something that looked like it could open, and I slid the thing back, and there was a, a keychain, a, 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 a screwdriver, and a Phillips screwdriver. <laughs> and I figured, oh, I'm not showing this to him. So at Christmas, I said to Peter, Merry Christmas from Lucy. <laughs> he said, I need a keychain. I said, open it. It'll he was looking all over for a keychain. So I think that's great. And the best part of you, well, you have had your daughter and your grandchildren with you. And I thought they were going to join the club and help us out. The most important part, Peter said, don't you forget about Richard. Because <laughs> Richard makes the brownies for every meeting. And when we have a special <laughs> meeting, he makes two batches of brownies. And he is now our formerly our club photographer. So whatever we do, if I'm out there washing the car one of these days, I'll call Richard, he comes over, he takes a picture, then he can put it on whatever he wants to put it on. I'm being very Thank facetious you. at this point. <laughs> but Lucy, I did make you a certificate, and Peter, I'm going to ask you to please put it up. It's on your drive. So here's the certificate, and I will read it, and I hope he puts it up there. It says, No Limits Toastmasters, congratulates Lucita Khan, DTM2, for achieving the Advanced Communicator Bronze Award, is signed by me as the club's VP Education, and I signed it as of today, and I want you to enjoy this. And this is the, the paper that I use for all of our shows. So take this and enjoy it. Thank you, and friend. I hope it went up there. I, I couldn't Thank see you if it very went up much. there or not. And another 20 years, right? Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. You're welcome. Okay, now let me go back. And, uh, oh, Lucy, oh, that's right. We piggybacked here. Lucy Khan, DTM2, doing speech number five from the same manual, Special Occasions Advanced Manual. Now you're accepting an award, and Paul Paradise is your evaluator. He has six minutes, and <laughs> your title is Thank You for This Recognition. Let's all welcome Paul Paradise. Paul? No. Lucy, where is Paul? Welcome me. 
What? You have to welcome me. Oh, that's right. <laughs> he can't evaluate you until you speak. Let's all welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a rough week. Our next speaker is Lucy Khan. Lucy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good, mor good morning, Philip Toastmaster, uh, uh, distinguished guests, and uh, viewing audience. I would like to thank Frank, Frank for giving me this recognition. And I'm so honored to receive this Advanced Competent Bronze Award from Toastmasters. I think Toastmasters is a great organization and it helps me become the person I am today. Being a part of Toastmasters has been a joy and a privilege that I am grateful for every single day. It has given me the courage to speak in public. Toastmasters make you a better speaker and a better leader. I'm also thankful for giving me this award to everyone and also thankful for my family who gave me feedback for all my speeches and sometimes they corrected me for giving me a nice speech and making make sure that I did the correct pronunciation. And my friends are very eager to hear all my humorous speeches. They are so happy to hear them and they were laughing and they tell me like, can you do it again? Can you show it to my children? Can you speak it again for my, my teenager? And one speech that I was talking about is how uh, about the change of life. And I told the one speaker, one member saying that, well, I cannot say that to your ch children because that's my story. And he said, I love to hear that again. So I went to other clubs and tell them about the story about the change of life. I would like to thank my husband, Richard, for listening to my speeches. And he also corrected me for all the pronunciation <laughs> that I missed. But that was really nice that I can pronounce some stuff that I never could pronounce. I'm also happy that everybody has been helping me, especially you, the members from the No Limits Toastmaster. I like to help ask you that I'm very thankful for being a club supporters. I wouldn't be able to do this if it not for these amazing people in this club. So uh, thank you for everything, and I hope that I can get my third DTM soon. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Fran, for helping me and your support. And I hope that everybody will give me more feedback in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lucy. I did want to add something that the most important thing you've done over the years as far as I was concerned, and I have spoken about this in the past, but in 2001, 2002, I was the District 46 governor. And at our fall conference, it, we just came out of 9-11, yes. where we lost five clubs in the towers. We lost 16 members of clubs or immediate family members and in the parade of banners, Joan was carrying one of our banners of our club. And I had asked anyone who was a serviceman, fireman, policeman, anything, to wear a uniform to pay homage to the folks that we lost. And as Joan was walking down the center aisle to post our club banner, she happened to see you on the other side of the room in your Air Force uniform because you were a member of the Air Force. Yeah, Air Force is and she stopped the parade of banners. <laughs> Not too many people would have done that. <laughs> but Joan, if she wants to do something, she'll do it. <laughs> and she waited until you worked your way over, and then the two of you carried our banner up. That moment, every time I think about seeing the two of you walking toward that stage, I, I have goosebumps again now. So you are a very thank special, you. special person. Thank you. I want to thank you for your service. Thank you. OK. Some stories have to be retold just to remind people that those images have to be kept. They have to be kept alive. Now, we will go into the evaluation portion of the meeting. And thank you for being my wingman over there. <laughs> All right. Sue Brooks' speech was evaluated by, oh, Lucy, we're going to yeah. hear from you again. <laughs> OK, Lucy, why don't you read the evaluation? And I'm sure Sue will like it, OK? OK. Thank you. 
fellow Toastmaster, viewing audience, and guests, and especially Sue. So I like your title, The Best of Birthday Gifts Ever. And I think it was your birthday gift, but then I realized that it was from your mother. And I like the way you s speak. You got great vocal variety. Uh, you are, your speech are appropriate for the topics. You have uh, good, good, uh, clear and concise speech. The content are very good, and I like the way you talk about your brothers and sisters, how you surprise your mother and everything. And the only, if you could, how would the speaker have done differently to make its speech more effective? And I think you should have told us how your mother reacted at, on her surprise birthday since she wasn't there and it was your father who opens the door for the surprise but we wanted to make sure how she reacted on that surprise birthday party. And I was really nice to see that everybody was there and you have all the picture of the family. And what did I like about the speech is the great family photo and the great family pictures and especially the frame that you give it to your mother to be a best birthday gift she ever had. Thank you. Mm, thank you, Lucy, very nicely done. All right, and now Rachel's speech was evaluated by Ken Raftery. Ken, oh, you're there already. Uh, surprise, surprise, huh? Right. <laughs> okay, Ken, thank you for doing the speech, and it's not the speech you, I gave you Diane's speech about her little dog because she likes to do animal sounds, and I thought you'd get a kick out of that. Right. So now you can evaluate Rachel's techniques for memorization. Ken Raftery. And thank you, Fran, fellow Toastmasters viewers, and especially Rachel. Yeah, I'm evaluating the speech that Rachel did today. I thought from the very beginning, Rachel had my interest. The gestures were just great from the very beginning. An acronym, a, a great idea for memorization. But a suggestion for improvement, I thought maybe you could have give, given an example. I don't believe you did, because I would be curious to hear some of the ones that you've used. You talked about making a song, a great idea. I did that myself in college once in a while. And then you were, I was thinking to myself, you talked about turning scripture into song. You know a famous song that did that? Anyone? Turn, turn, turn by the birds. Quotes from Ecle Ecclesiastes, if I'm saying that correctly. And great singing. Of course, the t topic of the speech was vocal variety. Certainly singing is vocal variety automatically. And I liked how you said, let's remember the good things. You said that a few times. It's certainly a great philosophy to have in life. And you did a nice summary at the end of your various techniques for memorization, which was great. And you also ended it by saying to write things out. That reminded me of something said in one of my college classes the other day. The professor said, you should take good notes because as you write down these notes, it helps to cement them in your mind. So that's kind of what you were saying today as well. And I enjoyed the speech today and I hope to apply some of the techniques that you shared. Madam. And you should qualify that you are not a college student but you are a college teacher. <laughs> not true, I'm not a college teacher. A high school teacher, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Oh. My mistake, my mistake. Thank you very much, Ken. And now Joan Marizio's speech was evaluated by past District Governor Paul Shaw for a lot of other things. You are an Area 42 director this year, Paul. Hope you're enjoying it as much as I'm enjoying my area. Oh yeah, it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Good. Are you ready? Am I ready? Yes, I'm ready. Would you like to begin? Uh, okay, time to begin. <laughs> Joan, how to say it? Well, you said it perfectly well. How to say it? You were talking about ways, uh, things that were happening on a plane and how to prepare for the flight, and during the flight, how to uh, take care of yourself. Uh, examples of walking at least every, a little bit every two hours, not crossing your feet. Um, it was very interesting. There's a couple of things I learned about, about that. Uh, you also talked about the water bottle. So you gave a lot of, Ex, not explanations, but the uh, uh, word I'm looking for. You gave a lot of ideas about how to prepare for and work comfortably or fly comfortably during a plane flight. 
the, the one thing, uh, one of the things I could have said, I, I'm going to say is about have doing something differently. And there really wasn't much that you could do different. Um, another project has to do with using props. So maybe uh, the wine glass or a water bottle uh, could have been something you could have shown, but that's uh, not part of it. One thing that I really enjoyed in the end of your statement or the end of your presentation was that everything you gave was very interesting except for one thing. You don't fly. <laughs> so, you know, where did this all come from? I don't know, but it was great. Thank you very much, and I look forward to future presentations. Thank you very much, Paul. <laughs> You're always a comedian. All right, I hope it's Rachel who's coming up. Thank you, Rachel. You have more jobs than you thought you would have today, except <laughs> just setting up the studio and saying, Fran, I'm here. But uh, from now on, we will communicate more, so I know that you're going to be here. Absolutely. I thought she either was deathly ill or had gone to Oshkosh and forgot <laughs> how to get home. I called her on both phones, emailed her on both emails, and then finally, two days ago, I wrote her out, yes, Ken, to take over her roles. And here she is now upsetting my whole I've, I've been doing 63-hour weeks. Wow. So it's Good been, a hard, been a hard uh, eight, eight weeks. But in Toastmasters, we learn how to communicate. All you have to do is say, Fran, I'm too busy to... Okay. <laughs> okay. Point well taken. Thank you. And you accepted it beautifully. All right, Rachel, why don't you tell me what you thought about the speech? I thought it was very important for our studio audience and our home audience to know that we're not just giving speeches, but we have a purpose for the speech. And those are projects that we're working on. And we are able to earn an award because of what we've done. And you have laid that out very clearly for our home audience so they know what's going on. You gave very graciously the uh, honors to Lucy and letting her know that it's been very appreciated for the club to receive the credit for the work that she had done. And I think the, the home audience now knows that not only does Lucy get an award, but part of that goes to our distinguished club program. So the club gets credit for being a good club. The one thing that I, I did want to see a little bit more of is um, your face, Fran. You are, you are looking down at your notes and uh, not as much eye contact with the camera. I thought that that could be uh, improved. I'm not sure how to do that. Uh, we don't have, like regular TV shows, the scrolling banner to, to give you the ability to see it next to the camera. But overall, I think the audience got a very good feel for what's going on. And you did honor f uh, Lucy with her uh, bronze award. And of course, we were able to show that certificate up on the screen. So overall, it was very well prepared, very well orchestrated, just a little bit more eye contact with the camera. And I think we'll you know, have an a excellent, excellent uh, way of presenting awards in the future. Thank you. Thank you. I couldn't see my camera, and I saw a blue light wiggling around over there. And I, was, I didn't know what the blue light was all about, unless somebody's just playing with me over there. But thank you, Rachel. Lucy, your evaluator was Paul Paradise. Hi, Paul. Thank Hi, you very you? much. Thank you for this recognition. That was a nice title that you came up with thank in your you. speech. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Paul. Sure. Well, I was sitting here wondering what, um, as, as your evaluator, what award you were going to get. And then it wasn't until Fran uh, gave uh, her award that I realized what you were going to get. And I was very, very impressed. So I thought you were... Um, very, very gracious in terms of accepting the award. And I would learned a lot about you. And we're all here in Toastmasters seeking to get something. It's uh, usually a character building. It's uh, familiarity with public speaking. And I was grateful that you mentioned your husband, the support that he's given you, and uh, how it's helped you in your, in your personal life and achieving several of your goals. You brought in some personal experiences as well in terms of meeting other Toastmasters. One thing I thought you might have brought in, uh, I think you're born in another country, and Toastmasters then helped you uh, learn English and become a better speaker here in this country. So outside of that, though, I thought you gave a wonderful speech, and I thoroughly uh, enjoyed it. Thank you very much.
much. Yeah, I think one of the best conferences I ever went to, I, the, one of the international conferences, Tony Figueroa was in the gift shop, and he was talking to this girl behind the counter, and they were laughing and laughing and laughing. And I walked in, and they both looked at me, and I just started to laugh, and the girl looked at Tony, and Tony said, don't worry about it. She doesn't know the thing that we're talking about. I said, you didn't know I learned, what is it? Tagalog. 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 Yeah. And the girl almost died. I have, <laughs> I, they wouldn't tell me what they were speaking about, but you know, I'll go up to anybody who's a stranger and get right into the conversation at any rate. Paul, you are up here as tabletop. Oh, yes, I have a nice question for you, Paul. Oh, great. You know, I haven't <laughs> seen you in a long time because you were out somewhere in December when we taped and we couldn't tape in January. All right, Paul Scharf. Oh, yeah, I like this question. I hope you will, too. You ready? Oh, I'm going to love it, I'm sure. All right, this is where we learn how to speak in an impromptu way. So for our guests and for the home audience, you never know when someone is going to come up to you and ask you a question. This teaches you how to respond sensibly and quick on your feet. So, Paul. If I asked you to research something significant that happened in your hometown 100 years ago, would you agree to give us a five-minute manual speech about it on an upcoming meeting? Paul Schaff, and you come from <laughs> Highland Park, New Jersey, so. Correct. <laughs> yes, I would be able to give a five-minute speech on something that happened almost 100 years ago in my town. And the reason I would be able to do it is because I joined that particular organization 50 years ago. And I'm talking about the Highland Park First Aid Squad that is just short of 100 years old. And it is probably one of the best squads in the country, of course, because I'm on it. And in, in re I'm, I'm very modest. In reality, for those of you that have unfortunately used a, an ambulance, a local ambulance, nine times out of ten you get a bill. In Highland Park, we're 100 percent volunteer, which means you don't get a bill for the service. Of course, you're going to hope that the service is good, but, but in fact, uh, you don't get a bill. That's one nice thing. The other nice thing is the fact that we are there and we're there to help, and I could spend much more than five minutes explaining the uh, benefits and the growth of the squad. So that would be no problem to uh, give a five minute plus speech on that. Thank you very much. Okay, and when you make that speech, take some pictures because we had a meeting when you were district governor over in Highland Park. Yep. Remember? So yes. And you get those men in the picture in the ambulance and they had to call them out from the meeting to move one of the ambulances. Oh, I don't remember what wow. it was the reason, but thank you, Paul. Okay. All right, Paul Paradise, I have a question for you. All right, Paul. Oh, I like this one, too. Okay, if you could take three books with you on a trip around the world, what books would you choose? Paul okay. Paradise. Well, as Fran, thank you. As you know, I'm a mystery writer, so there would probably um, be a mystery writer's books. Uh, I like Michael Connolly quite a bit. Uh, I like uh, S.J. Roseanne, and I like um, probably another mystery writer. I'd have to check through my personal library, but I have a whole list of books that have, been, Linda Fairstein would probably be another one, but I have many autographed books by all of the, quite a few mystery writers, because I'm a member of the Mystery Writers of America, and I go to many of their chapter meetings. Um, I'd have to go through, again, uh, to think of specific titles, but that, that's probably what would happen. Thank you. Okay, well, we've had George Hopkins, a mystery writer, on the I show do. a few I times. I do. I remember him. I had his and he just rejoined the Staten Island Toastmasters Club a few weeks ago. Yes. And you ought to get some of his. I have all of his books, all six, and he's working on his seventh, and they're all autographed. Well, before I take my trip, I'll, I'll, t I'll talk to you. You can <laughs> okay, the very, library. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, and now, Joan Maurizio is next. Joan, your question is a little bit long, but I thought it would be interesting to bring up some Toastmasters history. In 2007, when it became apparent that District 46 needed to be split into two smaller districts because it had too many clubs, I was called by Toastmasters International and asked which district number I wanted for our Staten Island clubs, District 46 or the new district not yet given a number. Without hesitation, I chose the new number, and the rest is history. What answer would you have given them in California? 
had you been asked? John Rizzio. Um, me in an ornery, I would have said I want my own number, but that probably would not have done well because Fran has any number I think you could throw out at Fran, she could relate to. Like she, I think she said 83 was the number of a Yankee that she liked. I probably would have picked either odd numbers or even numbers like an 11 or 22 or whatever, but being it was just that, either 46 or 83, I think I would rather have stayed with the old because that's what I'm familiar with. 83 does not have a special meaning for me. So getting off the course of the table topics, this pen is crying for its owner. I could hear it sobbing, so I'm going to leave it up here, and I hope to come back for it after the show. Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you, John. <laughs> All right, Ken Raftery, I have a question for you. When you stand up here, Ken, can you tell me what's, how much time is left? Eleven. Eleven minutes? Oh, I guess I'll ask a few more questions then. All right, somebody will have to cue me in on the time. Would you tell me when there's like two minutes left over there? Can you see that? I got 11 minutes there. Yes, but okay. when, when you see yeah, it, two yeah. minutes, let me know. All right, Ken. Oh, yeah, this is a good question for you, Ken. It has nothing to do with calculus or anything. Right. All right, you've given speeches about the way you shop, and I'm very impressed. So when you're standing in a line, at this, and this bothers my son terribly, so, Peter, I didn't tell you about this question, but he'll enjoy mm -hmm. your response, so be careful. Okay, when you're standing in line at the supermarket and the cashier and the customer in front of you start talking about something that has nothing to do with the groceries, how do you handle your angst at the delay? Ken Raftery. Thank you, Fran, fellow Toastmasters and viewers. I have the perfect response to that. And the response is, I don't deal with cashiers anymore. And the secret, and again, I've spoken about Stop and Shop before, the gas rewards program is great. Stop and Shop, and for that matter, I don't know, maybe ShopRite has it too, I'm not sure. They have this kind of gun that you could use where you ring up the barcodes as you shop. So the bagging, the pricing, it's already done. Then when you're ready to end it, you just click the barcode and you could, in other words, you could do the self-checkout or you could do it with the cashier, it doesn't matter. But why would you do it with the cashier? So... It's just great because you could self-check out yourself and you could ring things up yourself. And you know the running total at all times. Sometimes I'll have a coupon that will say, you save $4 if you spend 80 But thanks to the fact that I'm ringing up as I go, I know exactly what my total is at all points in time. So there's no danger of underspending after all that. And for that matter, let's even say that all the guns are in use. It doesn't matter because you could have the app on your phone so that you could actually talk about technology, ring things up on your phone. The, the phone can read the barcodes too. So talk about technology. I mean, what will they think up next? But the answer is if you don't want to deal with cashiers or annoying people, I'm sure annoying people are still going to be around, but <laughs> you can avoid them as much as possible by either using your phone or using the gun. Not all stop and shops have them, but the one on Richmond Avenue, I can tell you for a fact does. Very good answer. Oh, I didn't know you'd go that in that direction nice. at all. Yeah. Never heard about that. Perfect thank, segment. Thank you. Ken. Well, I, I've known you since you were, <laughs> gee, just out of school, I guess. <laughs> all right. Fred, so, if you have time, I got an answer. I do yeah. have time. Yes, fine. Yeah, we have, I can't see the. Yeah, the answer. Eight minutes? All right. Okay, go I'd ahead. like, Fran, I'd like you to give me the same question you gave Joan. Do I, oh, Joan? Yes. Do I have to read that all over again? Yes. The number. Well, well you were our first District 83, and I did not choose it. I know. Oh, okay, because she, uh, she must have understood. She thinks I make all these decisions where I don't. <laughs> Anybody who has a uh, Jay, uh, Jay, uh, Jay it is. Jay, are you still there? Yeah. Would you like to have a question in a few minutes? Somebody let me know. She can come up after Paul, and you just have to talk until the red light comes on. <coughs> just think. All right, Paul Scharf. In 2007, when it became apparent that District 46 needed to be split into two smaller districts because it had too many clubs, I was called, personally, by Toastmasters International and asked which district number I wanted for our Staten Island clubs, District 46 or the new district not yet given a number. Without hesitation, I chose the new number, and the rest is history. What answer would you have given them had you been asked? Paul Sharp. Fran, thank you very much for that question. And yes, Toastmasters did call me since I was the first district governor for the new district. 
And the question was, what number do you want? And I thought for a minute, and I realized that they were taking 46 and they were cutting it in half. Well, if you take 46, you take the number 2, and you multiply 4 by 2, you get 8. And if you divide 6 by 2, you get 3. So therefore, I said, I would like 83. You are the one that's responsible. They gave me 83. I went back to the district. And at the next conference, I asked everyone what they thought of the number 83. And did they believe that I went to TI or TI came to me? And that was the answer we got. A lot of people raised their hand. And when they did, I said, great. I now have the Brooklyn Bridge I'd like to sell you. <laughs> Was that a lie? Oh, I'll call them on Monday. <laughs> You're not getting away with that. Oh. You never told me that. I think you would have taken credit Thank for that. Thank you very much. I think you would have taken credit for that a very long time ago. If you I did, the first day. <laughs> oh, you were talking about your age. See, I wasn't there yet. Oh. I'm still not there yet at 83. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank Ask you my very son, much. he'll tell you. All right, is, is Jay standing there? No, somebody else was. Who's standing there? Come on now, we're running out of time, so. Who, who would like to answer, who a, to answer I, a question? I have to see who's up there. There's no one here yet. Will someone please come up? Emmanuel, please come up, if you'd like. You're on the second show. It's going to be a simple question. All right. All right, folks. Lucy, would you like to answer one of those questions? Come on, somebody get some courage <laughs> okay. here now. You hmm? might want to go. No. Come on. He's going to, yeah, he's going to do it. All right, somebody better come because yeah. we're going to we're going to run out. Just when people get courage, we'll be running out. Emmanuel, thank you. Yes, Emmanuel, look at the camera and smile. This gentleman is joining the No Limits Club, and as of March, and I'm very pleased. This is the first time we've had a chance to meet, and I like what I'm seeing, and I think he'll be a good asset to our No Limits Club, and I hope you've enjoyed the show so far to see what people are doing. So, which question would you like to answer, or would you like to just tell us what your impression is today, or something about yourself very quickly, because well, you're doing I'm an icebreaker in a few minutes. Yeah, I'm very impressed uh, from what I've seen so far, but I'll take a question. I'll take a question. All right. Well, let's do, let's do this. Now, you told me before that you came, f that you were born in Liberia. That's good. I have to go and see on a map where that is. I, I don't know anybody from there. All right. Why don't you take the question about if you were on a, a long cruise? And you could pick out three books. Uh, you seem to be a kind of a man who likes to read. What kind of books would you take to enjoy on a cruise? Well, I love to read books. And certainly, I would take uh, a book called The Tipping Point by Michael Bisden. I'll mm -hmm. also take the book From Good to Great by uh, Jim Collins, a great leadership uh, expert. I'll take the Bible as a third book. Good for you. That's good. Good for you. Nice reading. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And we'll see you on the Thank afternoon you. show where you're going to do your icebreaker, and you'll see what it's like. I figured it was a good idea to get you to face the camera so you won't be too nervous later on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is Jay interested in coming up? Good. Does it Maybe you could drag her. Jay, we don't bite. <laughs> Is she coming? People don't understand that. I can't see a thing past the slide. Right, right, right. All right. All right. There's... Three minutes left. Who would like to answer a question, please? All right, then let, let me just talk about something else then, since we have a couple of minutes, and I don't want to run over Lucy. Watch the time. Right. Every March for the last four years, we have honored Gregory Prillo, a local Staten Island artist, on his birthday. And this year, on the first meeting in March, well, actually, it'll be the second show in March, March 3rd, we're honoring him for his 91st birthday. Gregory Prillo and I met about 40 years ago when I went to his home in Grasmere where he used to live and I asked him if he would hang a painting on my front porch because I was having a political rally for Guy Molinari, our congressman. Mm -hmm. And he told me in no uncertain terms, Prillo, don't hang on fences. <laughs> and I was very upset and he said, but come on inside. Well, he was standing at the door in his pajamas. And I was very glad that my nine-year-old son, Peter, was there. And I went in. And the rest is history. 
we bonded. His wife is a member of my Women's Club of Tottenville, and Greg is being honored very shortly with the Lewis R. Miller Leadership Award for his artistic works, and we've yeah, been honoring him all these, hmm? Yeah, like two minutes. Two minutes? Yeah. Okay, I was just letting people know, well, we still have- 158. You know, yeah. Tell me when it's two, two minutes, that's- 158 that's now, 154. Oh, okay. All right, but we will be honoring Greg on the second show, and we've had to postpone the other show that we were supposed to go in December, where we have Al Lambert coming on to talk about the canonization, the sainthood of Father Vincent Capodanno a Staten Island Marinol priest who was killed in Vietnam. Poignant story, and there's a movement on to have him considered a saint in the Catholic Church. So March will be if Al can come for the first show because he has to go right to work after his speech. And then the second show, we'll be celebrating Greg's 91st birthday. He will not be with us, his, uh, but he sent us some pictures of Indian chiefs, and I've got a crew of people who are going to do research on those chiefs, and it's going mm -hmm. to be about his love of whatever comes into my mind at that time. So I guess it's this one, is the one, end. one, one minute. All right, 59. folks, 59. I, I appreciate the folks who stepped up when they were asked to step up. If you didn't, don't worry about it, <laughs> because sometimes you need a little more courage than you think you have. But once you get up there and you just feel that everybody around you wants to make you look good, See, those people who got up there made me look good. Otherwise, I'd be sitting here looking at Lucy saying, please, Lucy, do something. <laughs> say something, Lucy, say something. So we have 32 seconds left. We will have another meeting. We take a break. So it's like after lunch, have another show. We have other speakers. Sue is coming back to give a second speech because she's filling in for someone, which I'm very pleased that she always has something she can talk about, just like Rachel. Right. You know, they have a reserve. <laughs> I always pack extra goodies down mm -hmm. here so that I can grab something. And, and I, as I say, I bring this light wooden lighthouse. When I taught the American Sign Language class public speaking a few years ago, mm -hmm. they gave me that as a gift. And the weight difference between what the girls gave me and the girls and the fella and what you gave me, I look at yours all the time, <laughs> and I, I love you for it, but I can't carry it's that. Heavy. I just don't want it to break. So, folks, okay, we'll see you next good. time on Toastmasters in the Community. Which, if you all come up to the front, I know our club photographer would like to take a picture of the group. Will everybody please come up and just stand around the top up here mm -hmm. so we can have a record of who was at the show? We have what? Yeah, don't anybody block the banner. Ken, you always stand right in front of the club number. So yeah. I, 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 told jo I told Joan, I gotta keep everybody away from, yeah. don't block the name of the banner. It was excellent in time. What's that? It was excellent in time.